Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about food sensitivities and I'm going to talk to you about the three levels of food sensitivities, what they are, how they happen and how you overcome them. So solutions oriented video, I'm actually going to share with you the things you can actually do to resolve these problems and this may be Maybe you've been following my work and you, you you know my process and you know my story and you know that I had lots of food sensitivities and I don't have them anymore. Maybe you've, you've clicked this video and you have no idea who I am and maybe you've been living in a world where people have told you that you have to live with these food sensitivities and intolerances, there's nothing you can do, you're just going to have to avoid them for the rest of your life or you're going to have to stay on a restrictive diet for the rest of your life. And I'm here to prove that wrong. I already have proved that wrong because I've done it, but I'm going to help you prove it wrong too by giving you the tools, the information and the understanding that you need to actually facilitate this 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 shift in your own life as well. So you can enjoy pizza and ice cream and wine and chocolate again. So I can eat all those things and I'm going to help you do the same. So there's three levels to this, but how to overcome your food sensitivities and what the three levels of food sensitivities and intolerances are. So we're going to start at the bottom and work up. This isn't exactly a non-linear process, but I would say for the majority of people, let's say probably 80 to 90% of people, this will be the case. They go from the first thing that I'm going to talk about to the second to the third. They don't strictly have to. They can have a, a, a misordered... Um, they can be misordered, particularly if, for individuals that may have had a past with, say, like eating disorders, um, so like bulimia, anorexia, or some other type of um, some some other types of trauma. But we will get to that at step three. So it is it generally for most people is a linear process, but it, it isn't always. So the first level of food sensitivity is a gut-based food sensitivity. This is this is the first level. This is where things usually start. And you know this is you. You know that this is at least something that you need to be looking at if you have gut-based reactions to certain food groups. So, when I'm when I'm talking about food sensitivities and intolerances here, there's a there's a big there's a big sort of there's several different big groups. You know, you've got things like histamines, salicylates, oxalates, sulfur molecules like thiols, you've got certain types of fibers, so you've got like FODMAP fibers, so you've got like your your onions, your garlic, and you're actually reacting to the fiber content in these things. Um, whatever the sensitivity is, it doesn't particularly matter, but if you're having a, at least at some some point in this um, reactive process, you're having some gut-based problems, there's a good likelihood that you're at this level at least, and maybe the other levels are also compounding on this, but we've got some gut level dysfunction. And if this is the case, the solution is likely to be found in the gut and the digestive system. So I always look at the gut and the digestive system through the lens of the five pillars. The five pillars are a concept that I put together based on all of my experience, my expertise, my all of the knowledge. So I scoured the whole internet. Like So this was like maybe like seven, eight years ago. So there wasn't as much data out there as there is now. But at that time, I watched every single podcast. I listened to every single YouTube video I could. I read all the Google Scholarly articles all about the microbiome and food sensitivities and how all of this stuff works. And with all of that, I've distilled like this like unfathomable amount of research. You know, we're talking like ten to twelve thousand hours of research into this very simple concept that is very easy to understand and very easy to teach. And the reason that is is it makes a lot of sense and it fits and it's the way things work. So the five pillars. These are the five primary core indivisible functions of the digestive system. What this means is if one of them works well but another one doesn't, it doesn't that you're still going to have a problem. You know, they they can't support each other. They are they are core functions and if one of them is missing, you will notice it. It will affect you with symptoms, it will you will notice it with food intolerances. And fixing that pillar is going to be what your body needs. So you can support it in the short term and fix it in the long run. And the five pillars, you've probably heard of these already. You know, if you're interested in gut health videos, if you're looking at sensitivities videos, you've probably heard of maybe all of these. These these but but putting them together in this way is is really, really helpful. So the five pillars are strong stomach acid, plentiful digestive enzymes, fluid, non-viscous bile. So we've got stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, 
We've got powerful coordinated motility and a strong impenetrable mucosa. You've probably heard of those things before already. And if you haven't, don't worry, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but you've probably heard of those things. And that's just, that's just showing you like you're on the right track, you know, you're going in the right direction. These five pillars are supported by a foundation. You know, you never put pillars just like into like sand, you know, you've got a foundation underneath this foundation that supports the five pillars is the microbiome. So if you have any dysfunction in any of these five pillars or in your microbiome, you will have a digestive problem. You will have food sensitivities, intolerances. You will have sensitivities to certain food groups. You will have a certain symptom set, you know, like gastritis and and stomach acid kind of problems. You 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 notice like more in the stomach region. You can see undigested uh, proteins. You can see uh, reflux. You can see gastritis. You can see these kind of problems, you know. Whereas enzymes, the if you have a problem with this pillar, you're more likely to see energy problems, constipation, um, SIBO, and uh, gut dysbiosis. You know, there's a certain symptom set associated with each pillar. You need to fix these pillars. Like, if you don't fix them, you don't fix whichever of your pillars are out of balance, you don't support them and fix them, and then build that microbiome back up, your body physiologically, so this means, like, on a physical level, you know, because we live in a physical world with physical rules, you know, if I hold an apple and drop it, like, it falls, like, it's gravity. Digestion is governed by physical reality. Like, there are rules to how digestion works. And if your body doesn't have any one of these five pillars, like, it, it physically cannot digest your food correctly. And it will, you will have bloating and gas, you will have constipation, diarrhea, you will have food sensitivities and intolerances because your body, like physiologically, on a physical level, in the gut, cannot break these foods down correctly. And if you keep eating those foods when you can't break them down, you will just keep having problems. And this is why people generally avoid the, uh, or remove these foods from their diet. And in this stage, that's actually a good thing. You don't want to be eating food you can't actually digest. But if you can support the digestive system so you can digest it again, you can add those foods back in. For more detail on how to do this, I actually have a course that I created that, that walks you through this whole process. It helps you identify what pillar is likely dysfunctional based on your symptom set and maybe some testing that you might have to hand. But honestly, these things are very obvious. You don't need to have done advanced testing. Based on your symptomology alone, you can figure out which of your five pillars are not functioning. And then you can you can optim optimally you can supplement for each pillar that is dysfunctional and then make other dietary or lifestyle changes around that and you can improve your symptoms like drastically i've had people improve their symptoms 80 percent in three days just through supporting the correct pillars that have dysfunction and changing the diet slightly to a, to basically support digestion even further so like we're, we're talking like bloated pregnant belly really bad digestive problems three days later like flat stomach digesting more foods actually even after three days adding new foods in and not having reactions to them so things can happen very fast if you actually understand where the dysfunction is happening so if you want more details for that course just just uh, let me know leave me a comment somewhere and i will uh, get you a link to that the next stage would be metabolic sensitivity or metabolic intolerance so this does usually involve the gut at some point because as uh, again, so quoting three, I think three videos in a row, Hippocrates, father of Western medicine, all disease begins in the gut. If you have some kind of metabolic dysfunction, there's a very good likelihood that your gut is either involved directly in that or is being strongly affected or influenced by it. So normally stage two requires that stage one was a problem initially. So normally you don't develop this metabolic intolerance, this metabolic sensitivity until you've had this gut based sensitivity first. But this is more characterized by um, multi-systemic symptoms and uh, like sort of multi-systemic metabolic failures. So what, what does this actually mean? Like, ooh, like big fancy words, ooh, met metabolism. So basically metabolism is your body's ability to like do work. So anything that your body is doing is a metabolic function. So like creating stomach acid is part of your metabolism. Um, detoxing is part of your metabolism moving uh, cholesterol from your liver to your cells and from your cells back to your liver is a metabolic function these are all these are all metabolic functions and if you've reached the level of metabolic dysfunction what's happening is you've got this kind of like equation for health which is like one plus two plus three plus four equals healthy and your body is now not able to do that equation correctly anymore either it's being 
given too many things, you know, you've got one plus two plus three plus 785, it's like, that's way too much. Or it's like one plus two plus three plus four minus seven. And it, it like the equation is wrong. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. Your body cannot do it. And what this looks like in practical terms is either you have got some kind of nutritional deficiency. So your body needs something extra to be able to function. This could be like a B vitamin deficiency, a trace mineral deficiency, a probiotic deficiency. So again, that's looking a bit more at the gut, but it does if influence everything because you don't have enough probiotics, you're not going to have the right neurotransmitters. You're not going to be able to um, break down, digest your food correctly. That's going to give you all of those other other nutrients. You know, your gut, your gut has a huge impact. That's why it's normally first stage, second stage. It, it can it can also mean that your body used to be able to handle something, used to be able to metabolize a substance that it now is unable to. So uh, examples of this would be things like sulfur intolerance, oxalate intolerance, uh, maybe histamine intolerance. There's a lot of a gut-based aspect to histamine intolerance, but there's more of like a, if you're looking at it through the MCA, MCAS lens, then there's more of a metabolic dysfunction going on there as well. You've got basically, uh, your, your, your body's overwhelmed with toxins, it can't handle them. So instead of trying to detox them, it's trying to attack them with the immune system instead. It's like a backup pathway to try and keep you alive. But that is metabolic dysfunction. Your body's not functioning correctly anymore. So this usually comes down to toxicity or deficiency. You've either got some kind of toxin, and this, the term toxin can mean like overtly toxic things like like mycotoxins or um, like glyphosate or pesticides in your food or like like overt toxins or toxins can actually become normal metabolites that your body just can't handle anymore. So for example, it's like salicylates, most people can handle these no problem or like oxalates, you can eat some plants and you don't have a problem. You know, like 80 I would say it's probably even higher. It's probably like 90% of the population can handle these things that are in foods and they don't have a problem with them. And this is because the oxalate or the salicylate comes in and the body has this like machinery that breaks them down and then processes them out and then they don't have a problem. But when your machinery doesn't work correctly, all of these salicylates accumulate, the oxalates, they build up and that your body's like, ah, oh, it's jamming up our system. We can't work anymore. And it, again, it's not that these things are actually bad themselves. And you, you can tell because... If you go back, I don't know how far you are in your healing journey, but if you go back to when you were like maybe seven or 10 years old, and this isn't true for everyone, but I'd say like 90% of the people that I talk to, they're like, yeah, I had a great childhood. You know, I used to eat like gluten and I had no problems and I could eat all the vegetables and I was fine. It's like, if you could do it then, you can do it now. It just means that there's some dysfunction at some level, either gut-based, metabolic, or on this number three that I'm, I haven't revealed yet. There's some dysfunction somewhere. If you fix it, you can go back to having the same level of health that you had when you were a kid, you know, because genetically your body knows how to do it. It's just the environment's changed. So we change the environment back and you can eat your gluten again. You can eat your salicylates, your oxalates, your histamines, you know, you can tolerate them again because your body knows how it's just missing something. So this toxicity, if you've lost the ability to process certain things, like I would say uh, a normal person should be able to handle like a certain amount of glyphosate. They should be able to handle like walking through a supermarket and smelling all the fragrances. You know, these are toxins, but you should be able to handle them without having a strong reaction. And I'm at the point now where I can, you know, I can smell petrol. I used to smell it and I'd, oh, oh, I'd, I'd faint, I'd pass out, I'd get all lightheaded. My body couldn't handle it. Whereas now I can smell petrol. I actually like the smell of petrol, but th that's beside the point. I can smell it and my body is just like, bring it on like I can handle it I've got the machinery to, to deal with that so this can be like overt toxins but this can also be things that you normally should be able to experience but you just simply can't so this can be th like things in your food oxalates salicylates sulfur molecules things like that your body can lose its level of tolerance to them and if we can fix this metabolic dysfunction problem goes away this looks a bit different for everyone based on genetics, based on uh, medical history, based on what you're actually sensitive and intolerant to. Like I have, I've had clients that have histamine intolerance and they don't have MCAS. And it's like, okay, we need to focus more in the gut here. I've got histamine intolerance guides on YouTube. If you haven't seen those already, go check them out. Just literally type histamine intolerance, William Dickinson on YouTube, go find it. Very easy step-by-step -step guide to, to heal histamine intolerance. It's actually one of, one of the easier ones because it's, it's gut-based. But then you've got like MCAS. It's like way more complicated. But I also have clients that have MCAS and they don't have histamine intolerance. So it shows you that you don't have to have this gut dysfunction to have this metabolic intolerance. But usually you do. And then we move on to number three. Number three is a curveball. 
And I think number three is something that not everyone is open to. I think number three is something that could be a bit triggering. Some people might find it a bit invalidating. So I'm going to give you a huge warning and say, just hear me out, okay? You know, like, instead of just hearing what I'm going to say and just saying, like, no, that's definitely not me. Because that's actually what I did. I, I did that. Like, I had I had heard this kind of thing I'm about to tell you. And I was like, nah, can't be me. Like, physical symptoms, food intolerances, I must have a gut dysbiosis. There must be... And there was... But this was also a layer that was on top of it. And I'm going to try and walk it, walk you through it in a way that is really digestible and really easy to say, like, yeah, maybe this is true. But, like, you have to stay open, okay? If you close yourself, you close yourself to the potential of healing. So, oh, open mind, okay? Try it. So, when we've experienced the what, what I've just described for a long period of time, you know, gut-based problems, um, metabolic intolerance, you know, we couldn't tolerate these things. Your... You're, you're kind of training your nervous system, you know? Think about if you, when you're training like a dog, you know? If every time the dog hears a bell, it sits down, it gets a treat, then every time it hears the bell, it sits down. It's trained that way. And in the same way, you train your nervous system, and you're not doing this intentionally, you know? This happens as a byproduct of illness, you know? You eat a food that you, you're like, oh, I, I feel hungry, I wanna eat, what I feel really like I wanna have right now is this pizza from this place down the road that I love. So you go and have that pizza. And then you get this like crazy reaction, you know? Skin's burning, gut really hurts, you get constipated for a week, you feel like, you know, you, you just you just don't feel good, you know? And you train your body that way. Like your the way your brain works, it, it has like a neural pathway where it's like one step follows the other. And so you can eat, you can do these things and it's really hard to not eat the things you want to eat because your body's smart and it tells you what you're hungry for. So you're like, I'm hungry for a pizza right now. I want to have it. Eat the pizza, have the reaction. This this creates a neural pathway. You do it again, reinforces neural pathway. Keep doing it because you're hung you want to eat pizza, right? And this doesn't even have to be pizza because pizza could like, by some people would be considered unhealthy. I don't think that's true. I think you can eat pizza and be very healthy. Let's take something that no one would question is, oh, that, okay, that's impossible. Because if I say something about animal products, then you'll have the vegans. And if I say something about plants, then you'll have the carnivores. So either way, I'm going to piss someone off. But okay, it's impossible to not do that. So let's take a fairly objectively neutral food. Let's take an apple. Okay, we're, we're going to take an apple. If you've got, say, salicylate intolerance, you, you eat the apple, you have a salicylate reaction. And you're like, oh, but I like apples. Apples are healthy. And then, but then you, you're, you're forming this pathway over and over and over and over again. And every time you eat food that you feel like you want, but you have a reaction to it, your body is like, okay, this is the correct response. This is the correct reaction. And then what, and what I'm going to tell you here is I've experienced this. I've seen other people do it too. You can actually change your physiological state. You know, you can become salicylate tolerant. You can become histamine tolerant. You can you can fix those first two steps. You know, you fix the gut-based sensitivities and intolerances. You fix the metabolic sensitivities and intolerances. And then you're just left with this third one, which is your body actually now can handle these foods, but we've basically trained it to have a reaction. And it's like, it's very, it's very, it can feel invalidating when you hear that. It can feel very frustrating because it makes you think like, and I know, I, I, okay, again, I know how triggering this is because, like, you've been to all the doctors and I know what doctors are like. They're like, do you think you have depression? Like, do you think it's in your head? And then normally they're not so gentle. They're like, you definitely have it. It's definitely in your head. And now I'm, I can hear that I'm, you might perceive that I'm saying the same thing, but I'm not, okay? I'm not. It doesn't mean there wasn't originally physiological dysfunction. There was. But the way that we train our nervous system it now thinks the right way to respond to these foods is with a danger response. So you can actually become food tolerant. So you can have the ability to, like I was able to tolerate, like like one of the big things that, and for me and for many people, they've got like a fear around sugar and carbohydrates. I was able to tolerate these probably for a long time before I actually was able to reintroduce them. But it's because my, because I'd had really severe reactions to these in the past, you know, having mold exposure, and having like candida and gut dysbiosis, I was like, carbs are bad, carbs are evil, carbs are the devil, they're going to make me have all these reactions. But that was, I because I'd experienced that, I had built that neural pathway up and I trained myself through the evidence of what I'd experienced because that was true. But because it was true, I was taking that truth and moving it into a place where it actually didn't have to be true anymore. And I was just repeating this pattern because it had experienced me and I was stuck in that loop. 
So retraining the brain and the body and the nervous system. And if, you, if you're going to ask me, how, how do we do this? I do have several guides on YouTube of how to do this. So you can go on. So I actually call this the, the non-physical aspect or the healing the emotional root cause. Because even though, like the, a lot of, at, at this stage, I'm trying to explain it to you in a very logical way. But the thing is, your body is not a fully logical thing. It's half logic and it's half intuition. It's it's half masculine and it's half feminine. And this next step, you know, this nervous system, like even these words like nervous system rebalancing and nervous system dysregulation, like they're very masculine. But in reality, like the truth of it, these are feminine things. And basically what you've got is a certain food has become associated with a certain emotion or a certain like emotional experience inside the body. And usually it's, the food that I love, so that, that causes me the most pleasure, causes me the most pain and suffering and torture, and I'm afraid of it. And we couple these things together, and we have a neural pathway that says, there's love in the world, and I love pizza, and I want to eat pizza, and torture, and fear, and terror, and horrible reactions, and powerlessness. Because, you know, you eat your food, you feel like you want to eat, and then, oh, I'm, I'm dying, and I'm powerless, and what is going on here? So we have to decouple this. And this is a process that does look different for every single person. But you can you can go on my YouTube channel, you can type William Dickinson, how to heal trauma, William Dickinson, how to find the emotional root cause. And you can even check out, so I've created my own method to help people with doing this, like overcoming this step. You can search William Dickinson, the Illumina method, I-L-U-M-I-N-A, Illumina method. This is a methodology that, I, that I've created through me going through this, you know, doing this, this, this state. So I did stage one, I did stage two, and I did stage three. Like these stages that I'm telling you about today, they're not just like this, like, oh, like I read it in a textbook. And like this professor said, this was like, I've done it. Like I've lived it and I have helped other people do it as well. Like that's the best evidence that you can get that this is how it works because it, I've seen it. I have firsthand evidence. I've seen it happen myself and with other people. And so this third, this third layer, this can happen from just having these first two layers happen to us. We can develop these pathways. But what can also happen is we can have other aspects of trauma. So we can have childhood trauma. We can have any, unkind, any kind of unprocessed emotion. You know, you can have a physical accident. You know, you can um, have a car crash and that causes you to experience a lot of emotion. And your body can't process all of that emotion at the same time. So it stores it. It holds it. And you get this injury that never heals, and then you go in this cascade of developing all of these different chronic health problems. And they're all connected to this same emotional root, you know? You have a car crash, what do you feel? You feel terror, you feel like you're afraid that you're gonna die, you feel um, alone, you feel powerless. And how does having a chronic illness with all these food sensitivities make you feel? Bang, exactly the same. So it's it's repeating this same like narrative. It, it's stuck, it's stuck inside the body. And it doesn't have to stay stuck. You can let it go. Your body actually has its own intrinsic built-in mechanisms to help it do this. It just needs to be provided the correct space, the correct environment, and you to approach it with the, with the right mindset. And that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to teach you in these other videos, the Illumina Method videos, is teaching you this process. So check out those videos if you feel like you're stuck on that third step. I will say, step three is basically impossible to do by yourself. You know, I have spent thousands, tens of thousands working with a bunch of different practitioners, doing different types of therapies and different types of modalities. It's really hard to do step three by yourself. I would I, I would discourage you from trying to do it by yourself just because it's more hassle than it's worth. Get somebody to help you with it. If that person's me, then wonderful. Shoot me a message, send me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk. Get in contact and we can have a chat. If it's not me, if it's someone else, you know, if, you, if you're doing similar kinds of things with your smack experiencing therapist with your family constellations practitioner with your um i don't know whatever like if you're doing these kinds of things you know if you're working on this level with somebody else like great do it but if you're not working on this level try and open yourself to it because there's so many results there there are so so many results there so to summarize and recap today's video the three stages of food intolerance you've got gut based you've got me metabolic dysfunction, and then you've got this trauma or non-physical, emotional, nervous system dysregulation component. To fix the first one, check out the Gut Health Bundle. It walks you through the five pillars of how to heal your gut, talks you through stomach acid, digestive enzymes, biomotility, mucosa, walks you through that foundation of the microbiome. This is actually part of the Gut Health Bundle. We also have a 
another course in this bundle called how to build a diet around food sensitivities. So it talks to you about how to make sure you're providing your body with all of the nutrients that it needs, you know, so that we can avoid that second stage, you know, where you, where you get nutritional deficiencies, how to avoid that happening when you have food intolerances, you know, how to build your own personalized diet to provide you with all of this adequate nutrition in a way that doesn't exacerbate and trigger these food, food sensitivities. Because obviously if you can't digest the food, eating it makes you feel bad and you don't really get anything out of it because if you're not digesting it correctly, you're not getting any of the nutrients out of it either. We also have a comprehensive food sensitivities list, food combining document. Um, I'm pretty sure we also have an introduction to the Illumina method in there as well as a, as a little like complimentary ebook as well. So if you want more details about that, let me know, leave me a comment and I'll, I'll, I'll grab that for you or shoot me an email again, support at williamdickinson.co.uk. Second step, metabolic dysfunction. More complicated for me to tell you how to fix it like just like this in a video. Try, you have to try and understand the the underlying metabolic dysfunction that's occurring that's causing the intolerance to the certain things, be that um, food-based things like histamines, salicylates, oxalates, sulfates, thiols, carbs, things like that, or if it's external toxins like mold, heavy metals, mercury, fragrances, stuff like that, you've got, your body isn't detoxing fast enough and it needs metabolic help there, metabolic support. Stage three, non-physical non um, aspect of this process. This can happen from trauma in childhood or from a specific tr um, like event, or it can happen purely just from having these first two. Just from having a chronic health problem it is traumatizing. And I don't need to tell you, like if you have a chronic health problem, if, you've, if you identified with one and two, you don't need me to tell you how traumatic it has been. It absolutely destroys your whole life. That causes nervous system dysregulation. That causes emotional imbalances that causes coupling of emotions together that should not be coupled together like trusting yourself and trusting your ability and confidence and like this is my appetite this is what i want to eat and terror and fear and horrible negative consequences when you couple those together that's a recipe for not feeling very good so work all of these levels really i encourage you i know the last one is a bit harder to be open to but please try you know because i really want you to heal and I probably could have overcome my sensitivities a lot sooner if I was open to that third level. And now that's why I push it so hard because I just want you to heal faster. So, <laughs> so do it, <laughs> do the third thing. I know it's harder. I know it makes less sense, but there's a lot of results there. So I hope you found that really helpful. I hope you found that a really interesting video. I hope it gives you actually a lot of practical takeaways and gives you an idea of like building a bit more of a roadmap and gives you something to focus on and makes you feel like you've got a little bit more certainty in this situation where it feels like nothing around you actually makes very sense and you don't know what the next step forward is. If you do still feel stuck, always reach out to me, you know, leave me a comment on Facebook, on YouTube, shoot me an email, send me a message, wh whatever it is. I'm, I'm always here to, to help you out. So I hope you found it really helpful. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.